So what is going on dammers, my name is Mehul and welcome to your 21st Angular 6 tutorial in which we're going to take a look at how we can extend our login application to allow user registrations as well. So let's get started. Alright, so in this part what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create something which allows other users to register on your angular application as well and obviously for that you need to have a front end which the users can use to register validation you don't want um, username admin to be registered by anyone in the world then you need backend as well obviously which involves registering user communicating with the database and doing all that sensitive stuff and obviously you want to show user when the user logs in you want to show him or her some fields which they can set accordingly basically it depends upon what your app is so let's see how we can create something like that so for the front end part if we take a look you can see that we already have this thing till now so what we can do is uh, we can modify this thing a little to make it more generic and instead of login we can make this register and we can say just register and we can also do something like instead of admin we can create a dashboard thing right so the admin would pretty much still be the admin but would see stuff at dashboard so now we have to create our register route so what we can do is go to our where's it Let's just close this a little. App.module file, right? And instead of admin, what we can do is uh, name this dashboard. And, uh, or rather, let's just keep it admin only. We're just gonna create another. And what we can do is here specify dashboard. And actually, we can make use of another property, which is path match, but uh, yeah. We'll just make that make use of that later on so um, this would be dashboard component right and if we can just create this component right away ng generate component dashboard and this would just do that for us right and there we are so now we have the dashboard component and what we have here is that we have a registration button as well so what we want is actually allow users to register so we're going to create another route here which would be our register route and the component would say register component now we can create this component as well and there we go so we have register component in place and dashboard component as well so inside our register component what we're gonna do is um, from our login component right here we have pretty much similar structure so inside my registration i can just close all of these things inside my registration i can just pretty much paste the same thing and I can say register user the summit of event and right here we can say username password and we can just create another field right here which just says confirm password see password right and yep that should do for the component file this would be also similar to what we have inside our login stuff so we're just going to create this method copy this actually this would be register user even not prevent default target is this uh, we have the username password and c password is query selector c password dot value and then what we're going to do first of all a basic check if password is not equal to c password then we can just create errors as an array here and we can just pretty much say errors dot push passwords do not match and later on when we do more validation here 
like querying if the username is available or not and all that stuff so we, we can just say here that if errors dot length is greater than zero then only we want to proceed to register this user otherwise obviously that's a fail so <clears throat> what we have here if errors dot length is actually greater than zero then um for the user service user service is just for the people who are logged in right so you're not going to access it right here so we can access the auth service here and we can say um uh what we have here get user details we are using get user details to send this request we're gonna create a lot of changes here to make it a little bit understandable also i'm gonna shift the php backend to node now for this application onwards so uh, we're gonna see node and mongodb for the database so i'm just gonna create a register user with the username and password and confirm password as well because we're gonna need to validate the same stuff on the back end as well front end can be bypassed by anyone so what we're gonna do is say return this dot http dot post and then um, this will return something I'm gonna post this to let's just say um, um, API slash register user or just register and then the data which I'm gonna pass is username password confirm password well if you are actually creating a actual registration form or something you would like to have implemented a captcha system as well which prevents fraud registrations and all that stuff but i'm just going to keep it simple this time and <clears throat> make it uh, just username password and confirm password only all right so um with that being done what we have is that we are registering this user by calling this thing and remember i'm not depending php because eventually i'm going to shift the backend to node only so what we're going to do is say first of all inject this private auth auth service then i'm going to say and by the way um this syntax the syntax is equivalent to write writing auth as auth service and then you do something like auth has auth service and say this dot auth is auth right so that's the same thing it's just a shortcut if you were just wondering so uh with errors dot length is zero i want this dot auth dot register user username password and confirm password well um i believe that it does not make any sense to send confirm password here because we are already checking if the password does not match and if the user is actually bypassing this check then um i don't think so that user um uh, i mean if somebody is playing around with the apis then i mean i think it's just redundant so we can just omit this so yeah so we're gonna just omit this thing and there we go username and password simple as that and that is it so we can just subscribe to this thing and yeah i believe we should talk about rxjs now it's high time because we have been just using stuff without explanation for rxjs so um yeah we're gonna just take a look at that real quick in a tutorial coming up so um this is our back end ready our front end ready we are sending the script uh we're sending the http request subscribing and we are console logging the data we get from the back end so the register component right here if we see here go to register we get an ugly little form because the css is missing and we can just copy this login component css only and by the way you can just make it global as well because login and registration both are using this so yep username password and confirm password there we are and we can just make it something like um just a h2 here register here something like that 
So there we go. Uh, we can just register here when we click on summit it would send an http request to the server the server is not online yet so it won't work but basically this is the front end of the application and what we want is that we're going to say something like if data dot success is true then um, this dot router dot navigate to dashboard and once the data is successful, the server has already sent cookies back to the browser. So the user is authenticated. You're sure about that, right? And uh, just like login, just like we did with the login thing, we can also do the same thing with the login of administrator. We can also do the same thing with login of a regular user. So um, it just says, um, yep. So we just need to add this thing here. What's it? This dot auth dot register user. Just gonna create an interface register response, which would say success as boolean, and that's pretty much what we want right now for this to return. So this would be register. Uh, what we had register response as the interface name, and that takes away the error, but the router is not defined. So we can just inject the router here as well. Private router as router. And we just need that up to router. There we are. So this is basically the code that we'll look for the front end part. And that is all for this tutorial. In the next one, we're gonna set up the back end and see how to link front and back end. So that's all for this one, and I'll see you then in the next video. And one more thing, if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications.